So at this point, what we want to do is get our FRDM board up and running. And in order to do that, we need to cover three things. First of all, we need to get Code Warrior installed. The second thing that we'll do is install the drivers for the, for the uh, board itself. And the board itself actually has some software on it that allows it to talk to the PE, uh, the PE driver. So that'll be the third thing we do is, is load the firmware on our Freedom Board. So this is what, what it looks like. So you should have one of these handy and you should have your USB cable handy as well. And okay, so the first thing that we want to do is install, install the code on our PCs that will allow us to program this board, and that's Code Warrior. Okay, so we're going to install Code Warrior, and I recommend using the stick that is floating around the lab. So if somebody has a copy of Code Warrior, that is preferable. And uh, Code Warrior is about one gig. So when you have this folder, You'll just run the setup command and it will install Code Warrior 10.3. That is the version we're using this semester, but this could very well work for the, probably the next few versions of Code Warrior up to five or six or something. So don't let the, you know, we're, we're doing three, but if you're doing four or five, it, that'll work too. If you don't have access to that stick, then you'll need to go to Code Warrior, or sorry, to Freescale. And sign in and get a, a, uh, a password. And search on, uh, let's see, Code Warrior Development Tools. And you'll download a free version of Code Warrior. So just navigate through here until you get it, and it'll take about an hour to download, depending on your connection speed. Once that's installed, you should have some sort of an icon like this somewhere. And if it's not on your desktop, what you want to do is go and find it in your programs, and it'll be under Freescale, Code Warrior 10.3, and it's a little magnifying glass. So once you see that magnifying glass, right click on it, copy it, and then paste a shortcut wherever you want it. So it'll look like that. Once you have it, you might as well just kick the tires on it once and see if it opens up. And it will ask you where you want to work. We'll cover this a little bit later, but you want to uh, work on your desktop, create a folder. If you don't have one already, you might want to just um, hit Browse and then select your de desktop, right-click, create a new folder. and call it, you know, my PW space or whatever like that. You know, all your projects will go in there. Make sure you select that one. So it's now it's on my desktop, my CW space. Make sure this is not clicked. You should not, there should be no checkpoint here. And then hit OK, and it'll start up. Once you've gotten this far, you know you've installed it right, and we'll worry about programming later. But just make sure you can install it properly. OK, so you've got code, now you've got Code Warrior. And you're ready to move on to the next piece. OK, so the next thing we need are our drivers from PE Micro. Again, you should have that on the stick. And it's called Drivers 10 Install. You just run that once, and uh, it's pretty quick. Or you, if you're home, you can get an account at pemicro.com. 
sign in, do a search on drivers, and look for the version 10 Windows 7 if you're hopefully using Windows 7 or a 64-bit operating system in Windows, and then just download the drivers and install that. Uh, once you get that done, you're ready now to do the last part, which is to load the firmware actually on the board, this board itself. <coughs> okay, last part. We're going to install the firmware. This is the part that actually requires two hands. <coughs> so uh, what we're going to do is plug our I wish I could see the mouse better. Okay, I use my hand here. So we're going to plug the USB into this, this uh, port here while we are holding in the reset button, which is right here, the reset button. And what you're going to see, if I, if I just plug it in without it, I get the happy sound that the driver is recognized. Um, but nothing happens because I've already installed the driver, so I'm going to unplug it. Now I'm going to hold this button in, this button, while I plug it in. Makes the happy sound. But it also gives me this, uh, it opens it up like a, like a thumb drive would. So I have the select, I have now this thing operates like a thumb drive. I don't need to keep holding this button down anymore once I have this opened up. And I can open up these folders and uh, I'm going to open up this drive and I'm going to put onto it this third file that we had here. Okay. The drivers install. This is, you know, on the thumb drive that's going around the room. It's also on um, Moodle. So these two are on Moodle because they're small enough. I couldn't fit this on there. So what I'm going to do is slide this guy over onto the onto here. So I do that. And that's as easy as it is. Okay, now I've installed the proper firmware on our board. Now I can close this. I can unplug the USB cable. And now I just want to verify that my driver is installed right. So what I'm going to do is plug it back in again. And now I'm going to open my device manager. And I want to see under Jungo, the PE Open SDA debug driver. And then under the ports, I get the Open SDA uh, CDC, blah, 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 COM7. These two things. This means I'm, I've installed the hardware properly, and I can, at this point, move on and start programming or doing whatever else I need to do with Code Warrior. That should do it.